Good. Yes. <laughs> Deep breaths. It's gonna I'm be fun. Good. I'm really excited about it. All right, Jordan, you ready? Let's do it. All right, yo, what's up? It's your boy, Start Starks Artist. And you're now tuned in to another episode of the Joseph and Podcast, where we talk everything faith, life, and culture. And we're joined by an extremely yeah. special special guest. Very. This is like one of our most requested like interviews. Every time we ask, like, yo, who should we have on the podcast? Her names come up every single time. Every like, time. And it's like not even, not even close. We never hear the end of it. <laughs> never <laughs> hear the end of it. And we're also in, we're in New York with it. Yeah. Right. WTF yeah, Studio. Shout out man. Alex and Wheezy, man. Yeah. So I'm super excited. And if you don't know who we're referring to, or who we're talking about, the woman who needs no introduction, oh, to be please. honest, to at least our audience and people that we know, <laughs> right? Please. Karen out of Cora. Out of Cora. <laughs> I feel for- like I'm dreaming. <laughs> I've heard that intro so many times. Yeah, no, still, and now I'm like, mark. I just heard her in person. That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> now we appreciate you coming on though. Yeah, thank you. Thank you guys for having of me. Course. Yeah, I'm but what excited. a lot of people like don't know, which is crazy, is like you're a real OG. Um, like supporter of the podcast. Oh yeah! So I remember like before we even had. I want to say like we didn't even have like five thousand on Instagram. Back in no, you guys had I think two thousand. Yeah, two thousand. That's crazy. Yeah. 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 So even then, like yeah. I remember like you had. I don't know if you DM'd us or something. Mm-hmm. I don't. I can't even remember how it initially happened. But it was like yo, like she listens to the podcast, and that's crazy because I knew you from YouTube. How though? Just I don't know. I can't. I can't remember. I was like really into okay. like vlogs and stuff. Okay. Like I'm like I would like just binge watch, and I was like into mm-hmm. that. Right. So I knew you. From that, and I didn't know that you had your podcast. Mm-hmm. Cause I think that's like how like I initially like reconnected or like how we like yeah. I don't know like connected or whatever. I don't know how I stumbled on that you guys' page either. Yeah, but you've been listening reposted. like literally like mm-hmm. since then. Like I don't know, like episode yeah. five or something crazy yeah. like that. No, seriously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's been insane. Um. So we we appreciate the love. Like honestly, it thank means you, the world. Thank you. You guys are doing amazing. I don't know how you guys do it. Yeah. I think like you haven't missed a single week. Maybe you have, but I just don't know. Yeah, but no, like, I remember one time, like really early on, we um, I don't know if I put a poll up or we were on live, and I remember that uh, I asked like, "Yo, where did you initially like listen or coming uh, first come into the podcast, come in contact with the podcast?" And I was almost certain all the answers would be TikTok because that was like our biggest platform. Mm-hmm. We had just went viral in there, and yeah. I kid you not, like ninety percent of the answers was like, "Welcome to Kingdom like, by Karen." Yeah, WTCK. <laughs> yeah. Yes, because there's an episode that you did, and you had like I guess shouted us out and like showed no us some love. Way. I don't Real even talk. remember that. Real talk. And I was like, yo, that's like... That's, that's crazy. Like, you put us on, so you put us on. Yeah. Like, uh, I also don't even remember shouting you guys, but yeah. that's sick. Yeah. That's good. That's super dope. But for those who don't know, in your own words, uh, who is Karen Adekora? Ooh, okay. Karen Adekora. Mm-hmm. Um, I am a child of God, first and foremost. Mm-hmm. I... Ooh, this is a tough question. I... I don't know, actually. It's mm-hmm. like, and that's just has been the theme of like the year up until now, probably, is like trying to figure out who I am. Because I Thanks. think that there's so many different aspects. And when I feel like I finally had a glimpse on it, mm-hmm. like when I finally feel like I think I know who I am and like, okay, like, let me start acting this way. Then something completely pops up and like catches me off guard. So I don't know, but I, I can tell you that I like to read, <laughs> listen to music, um, talk to people. I love talking. So that's just like my main thing. And I I think mainly I just am a storyteller. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like I just tell stories, whether with like whether it's podcast or right. YouTube or like anything, I just want to tell a story. So no, I love that. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I wanted to mention and bring up because I have like I've been fortunate and just blessed to come across people I kind of really feel are like true creatives, mm-hmm. like pure creatives, right? And I think we all are to some extent. Yeah. But in the sense of people who know like how to express themselves through so many different mediums, right? And I think you do that so well, like when it comes to like YouTube, the podcast, and even through like fashion. And so like where did the motivation for all those come from? Like what's the origin story of like what that looked like for you? Right. Uh, I think that, like, anything that I see someone do that I enjoy, like, in my head, I just automatically go, like, I can do that. Fact, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> so, like, I just I just think it could be a bad thing and a good thing, but I generally think I could do everything, mm-hmm. which also is, like, kind of a bad thing because then I end up doing everything and I just, like, can't stick to one right. thing. And I, <laughs> I'm not, like, you know, jack of, like, all trades, master mm-hmm, yeah. of none. But... Yeah, I just see something and I'm like, oh, yeah, I can do that. So YouTube, I was just watching YouTube a lot um, in like middle school and stuff. 
And I was sitting there like, why am I watching these girls when I could just have other people watch me? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm like, I might as well just have other people watch me yeah. instead. And I feel like I have a lot to say and show that I was like, let me just do that. And then I did it and I was like, oh, I like doing it. And like other people like it as well. So uh, yeah. And then with podcasts too, like listening to podcasts a lot and then being like, I'm just, other people can ha listen to me talk. <laughs> yeah. So then let me just make one. And then with the clothing, that was just something that I wanted to do for a while. And I didn't have like, I didn't have the, I didn't know what to, what the purpose would be. Mm -hmm. Because when you make something and you want other people to connect to it, it's like, you have to have, what's the message? And like, what's, what's that connecting factor right, yeah. that people are going to, you know, relate to yeah and i didn't know what it was first i was like oh let me just write my name on t-shirts but it's like why would somebody buy a t-shirt with my name right. on it you yeah. know what i mean so i was just sitting on that for a while and then when like the whole period of like my debt to self journey started that's when i was like oh yeah this is what i was looking for like that yeah. message yeah. yeah yeah i've always i've always admired how you have your hands in so many different things but i feel like <laughs> How do you, how do you, do you ever feel burnt out? And like, oh, how, yeah. how do you deal with that? Cause I feel like for me, I, I feel burnt out even just doing this. Like you, <laughs> you're doing all how types do you, of Yeah. Stuff. How do you manage like all these different things yeah. that you got going on? Um, I, I feel like I never have like a grasp on it, mm. to be honest. I think I just do it one at a time and then they all kind of coexist. Yeah. But that's the reason why I was even saying earlier, like, I don't want to see a camera again <laughs> is because I'm just so tired. Mm -hmm. And like the thought of recording, I mean, editing a YouTube video for like five hours, like I do is just like, I don't want to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's also what moving to New York City taught me. It's like, I, I, there's not enough time or energy for mm -hmm. all these things. Yeah. And like, you have to kind of pick one. Mm -hmm. So like right now I'm like, okay, let me just focus on podcast and instagram because that's mm -hmm. just a job on itself and like put the other two on pause and then we'll see what happens you know yeah so, so what so what was that decision look like with you putting youtube on a back end because that's like was that your first platform that you really yes, started and got like that's yeah. what i thought yeah so like i mean of course like that started like blowing up and like going crazy yeah. so like what like what what happened what was like i guess the that that point of like you know mm -hmm. what let me just put this to the side for a second it was uh, just knowing that I didn't have time. I wasn't excited about it. That's mm -hmm. the first thing. It was like I was dreading every time I had to post. And that's just when you have to know like, okay, something's wrong. Yeah. It's when you're not excited to do it, you mm -hmm. know? So I was like, why am I not excited to do it? And then I had to explore like all these different things. Is it like, is it because I'm not getting the views that I want? Is right. it because I'm like, because if I was getting the results, would I be would excited, be, yeah. you know? So I had to, like, kind of think about that. And, yeah, just sit on it, talk to family, and, like, praying about it as well. And I feel like I felt like, okay, this is the right decision to just, like, step away. Because if you're not excited about something, it's going to show. And, like, they're not stupid. They're going to know that you yeah. just don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. So it's like, why, like half it when I could put all my energy into something else that I'm excited about. And I feel like I'm I'm more excited about the podcast, which is interesting. Like I love the podcast. Out of everything I do, like the podcast is my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. Because it's just Why it's is fun. That? I don't know. I I like talking a lot and I feel <laughs> like I'd have nowhere to say it. So okay. the fact that I can just say things and people will listen is very um it's endearing. And also the editing is not that hard. Oh, yeah. Um, no. Like, <laughs> it's very much. seamless. Yeah. And also, you guys have a setup, like, you know, Cal, you guys also visually record it. Oh, like, yeah. I don't. Yeah, yeah. So I it's ask you so about that. minimal. Yeah. Like, mm. I want to start visually should, recording, uh, but I'm like, you should. that's so much more work. Yeah. I promise you, it's not as hard as, like, editing a vlog. You that's know what I mean? true. So. You're just cutting out the little mistakes and yeah, positive yeah, yeah. stuff. It's very doable. Yeah, yeah, I've thought about that. And I think maybe I'll do it. Maybe yeah. I'll just think about it. But yeah, I just I just sit on my bed and I connect my mic to my phone and I'm like in the dark just yeah. talking. <laughs> and it's just so easy. That's so I, that's fire. I think maybe you did one where you actually did record I it did and I saw that one. one. Yeah, and I remember like you just had this little mic here. Yes, in your room. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but and I love it because it. it seemed just like so genuine and authentic and it just like mm. stream of flow, like consciousness and whatnot. So yeah. yeah. 
But thank you. Um, what I wanted to know is where did your relationship with God come mm-hmm. into like all of this? Like, you know, you mm-hmm. with the YouTube, obviously fashion, death to self, and then welcome to the kingdom. Like yeah. how, you know what I mean? How did that influence all of that? And when did that start for you? Yes. So I've like always been a Christian, which is kind of the story for a lot of people. It's just mm-hmm. like, you just kind of grew up with it. Um, and then growing up, I grew up in Ghana. So Christianity there is completely different than Christianity here. Yeah, the there the it's stuff. like, no, seriously, <laughs> there is, it's serious. Yeah. And like, mm-hmm. everyone is into mm-hmm. it. So when I moved to America, at like 12, and I'm like, oh, none of my friends go to church. Like, why am I being forced to? So it's like, I literally just had an argument with my mom. I'm like, everyone here just gets to do what they want. And I have to go to church and blah, blah, blah. And so then that mentality just starts like creeping in mm. and just kind of lose yourself along the way. Um, so when I started YouTube, I think it was evident that I was a Christian just based on like I'd mentioned God here and there. But in a lot of my vlogs, I w- it wasn't it didn't seem like yeah. I was a Christian. Like I was most of my vlogs were about like college life, which were just like me getting ready for a party. Mm. I was like high in half of the vlogs um and what else i just was cursing all the time i just really had a bad i don't know i just didn't it wasn't very evident you know someone would just look at you and be like oh yeah they're christian it was just like another vlog but that's kind of what you have to do these days because when people are watching you everyone's not going to relate to the christianity side of things right, right right so it's just kind of like I saw the girls do YouTube this way and I'm just going to do YouTube mm-hmm. that way. And I didn't really talk about my relationship with God. Um, and then I had a video that like blew up and got a lot of followers. I got a lot of followers from. And the pride in that moment of my life was insane. Like I genuinely thought I was better than every single person <laughs> what video ever. Was it was um, It was like a college video. It was like... Asking two guys, like my guy friends. Oh, questions. I know that one. Yeah, that was yeah, the one that was crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after that, like, my attitude was just completely different. And mm-hmm. I just, like, YouTube became my thing. Right. Like, my identity, what people knew me by. And, like, everyone on campus just knew my name. And, like, everything, people are coming up to you. So it's just, like, really heightened, like, sense of self. Mm. and. Yeah, and it destroyed a lot of relationships for me as well because I just was not acting like the same, which is so stupid because you started... Wait, you went, you went Hollywood? Sorry? You went Hollywood? Basically. Yeah. <laughs> and then people be like, oh, can you went Hollywood? I'm like, no, I'm just busy. Like, girl, you're not busy. <laughs> That's crazy. They're just busy. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. So, uh, yeah, it was just kind of like that for a while. And then I think quarantine happened and I went back home and I was still doing YouTube, but like... I don't know. I feel like quarantine just had a lot of people like reflecting on yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know what led up to it, but gradually I started to realize like I have had someone with me the whole time. Like I've had God with me mm-hmm. the whole time. And I have not been acknowledging that at all. Like all this this stuff that I'm getting, all these like results right, and like yeah collaborations and all these views and stuff like that is like what I prayed for. And then I got it and I just like completely neglected like how I got there and the fact that it wasn't me who got there, you know? And it's crazy because it wasn't even that much. Like if you look in the grand scheme of YouTube, (laughs) it wasn't that much at all. So it's like, why are you acting like this? Mm -hmm. Then why do you think God will trust you with more if you're acting like this right now? But um, it was a lot of different things. I think I was just like watching more sermons because I had more time, hanging out with like um, my friends. Uh, his name is Sam. He's like kind of like a spiritual mentor, but he's just, he's honestly just a year older than me. Okay. But okay, he's so deep in the spirit and he's like, he's very... Um, I whenever I talk to him, I feel like he's just not on this physical plane. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's always somewhere else. And he would 
it was I think it was him and his brother's mission to get me to give get my life back. to God. Yeah. Yeah. And it's they would just hang out with me all the mm-hmm. time. And they would let me say all these crazy things that I was saying and like defending like everything that I was defending. But they would they would just let me. They would just yeah. let me talk. They wouldn't come at me with like their theories yes exactly so it wasn't bad to be around them Mm -hmm. and then one time he invited me to like a program because he has these like little youth programs not little he has youth programs (laughs) and um i he just he was preaching and he was the one preaching and praying for everybody and he was just like a completely different person than the person i was hanging out with yeah and like literally like casting out demons i'm not kidding you like people were falling everywhere and i was like that's sam (laughs) and i was like i want to be like that so then then after service i talked to him and he's completely normal i'm like you just did that you know what i mean so that gave me more motivation to hang out with him because i was like wow like he's just completely normal Mm -hmm. when you first met him and i met them at a summer like job that i had and it was him and a group of friends and on the during the breaks, they would be like reading the Bible app while I was like watching YouTube you during too? my break. They would be on the Bible app, and I'm like, "You guys have a break, and you're reading the Bible." Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I didn't understand that. Um, so hanging out with him more, and like he bought me a Bible and That's like fine. started reading it, and just like watching more sermons and stuff. And I think one day it just like clicked out of nowhere. Like one day I just woke up. And it made sense to me, like the way they spoke, what they did with their free time, the fact that they were in church all the time, like it made sense. And it had never made sense Mm -hmm. ever before. And I just woke up and it was like, oh, wow. Like, I have to take this thing seriously. Um, And then that day I just like cried all day to my mom because I was like, "I I I can't go back. And I was kind of just like mourning like mm. the person that I was. Back, yeah. I was so sad because I realized I had to get rid of so many things. Mm. Um, but then I was like, wow, mama, like God is the most important thing. Right. Like I can't believe this. Um, so that started. And then I told Sam, I'm like, Sam, I finally get you. <laughs> and he was like, good. Right. And then he said, so I said, I'm going to go offline. I'm going to take the summer off and like just go into hiding and just read my Bible and just like really just learn everything that I need to know. Because I feel like I just discovered like a whole new world yeah. and I don't want any distractions. And then he was like, why don't you like post it on YouTube? Mm-hmm. Like you don't want to be on social media, but just don't be on social media. Just post it on YouTube. Like let other people see how this takes place. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, yeah, that's a good idea. So I started vlogging like the transformation journey and like just kind of like shedding everything and learning new things. And I didn't know what to call it. And then one day it just came to me like death to self because that, it felt like I was dying. Right, yeah, um, honestly, like even letting go of Instagram for a month felt like I was dying. <laughs> so yeah, it was really a death to self. And then I called it that. And then I recorded it. And I think I was a bit naive because I expected everyone to be on board. Like, I just expected everyone to be like, oh, yeah, like, that makes sense. Like, we support you, blah, blah, blah. But just slowly I realized, oh, this is not what anybody's interested in at all. Because up until that point, like, your base was kind of more secular. Yes, yes. And I had all these, this whole audience that was secular. Mm -hmm. So... I don't know why I didn't I didn't even think about the fact that people would stop watching. Like that didn't even occur to me. So I just kept going. And you know, people liked it at first. Like the first video I dropped of that to self like got a lot of positive, you know, comments. Mm-hmm. But I think as people kept watching, it's like you don't want to see someone who is kind of like shining, like c- kind of exposing you. In a way. Because I'm just like everybody else watching. Right, yeah. So if somebody I'm watching just starting to turn around and be like, yeah, you have to stop doing all the things yeah. that you're doing. It's like, no, why are you telling right. me that? So slowly, I was posting and slowly, like, I was losing an audience, but I was gaining a more, like, 
dedicated mm-hmm. um, people who understood. Yeah. And so after Death to Self, like the summer of that, I realized like, oh, this is a sick name for a brand because of Fear of God. And I was watching a lot of like Jerry Fear Lorenzo. Fire, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was watching a lot of Jerry Lorenzo videos because I found out he was Christian and like he had, you know, and I was just like trying to find all the Christian inspiration that I could and replace all the secular people that I looked up to with Christian ones. So that's kind of how I um kind of incorporated that. The name just like was like, oh, this would be perfect for the brand too and just not a vlog series. And then I already had a podcast at the time though. And like literally my second podcast episode was titled Drugs, You Should Try It. <laughs> and it was Wait, just you had like, a podcast? Yes. I had what a was po- it called? It was called Welcome to the Kingdom. But the funny thing is, at that time, <laughs> wait, no, wait. seriously, wait. no, listen, at that time, at that time, my YouTube name was King Cora. Right. So when I met, you know. <laughs> it makes so much sense. So I'm thinking the kingdom is a reference to like the kingdom of God, but See, King. Yes. Duh, 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 so so when I made okay, it, okay, okay. when okay, I made it, it was, it was name. right. So it wasn't I, anything like necessarily relating to. God at all. Oh, that's no. That's crazy. It just worked that way. Because when I made it, I was in like. My egotistical right. phase, my era. And I was like, I'm a king and like, this is my kingdom. And I'm just like, everyone like, welcome to the kingdom. So that's why I made the podcast. Yeah, that's a fire and it was just It going is to- heat. I like heat. <laughs> <laughs> it was just going to be about me and I'm creating like this empire, this digital media empire, Ooh, you know? That's actually kind of tough. Though. I know. And then when I, when I switched to God, I was like, this podcast name is still it's, so yes, perfect. It works. Yeah, it works. So then that's how just the podcast, the podcast was already there. But then yeah. I was like, oh, like now I know what to ch- channel this mm, podcast into now. And right. I don't even have to change the name. That's crazy. Um, Do you still have the second episode posted? Yes, it's I still like there. I like that. I, like that. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I never listened to it, but I did see it. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm curious now. I want to go listen to it. <laughs> no, I mean, you could. But like, if you listen, like maybe like even up until, let's say like 10 episodes, it was just me on like some BS. Let's just put it that <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's kind of how like everything blended together. It was a long yeah, story. No, that's yeah. fine. So like what like biggest lessons through this whole process of like whenever obviously so you were with Sam hanging mm-hmm. with him, which I think that's so important where you can have spaces like that where yeah. you can be like very vulnerable yeah. and transparent and people not like coming to attack you right. where you're at. Like like literally watching you grow and like nurturing you in that process yes. and not like yo like no you stop doing this stop I doing know. that or whatever right it's that space where you really feel that love yeah. um that it convicts you to change kind of like what you were saying mm-hmm. and so um after that and then it kind of like clicks for you like what are like the biggest lessons that you've learned since then right mm-hmm. since starting like that's the self and you know I guess a revamping welcome to the kingdom like some things that are like you know in your walk with God that you've yeah. learned have stuck out like dang um, I think one of the lessons right now, um, is that, cause I think when you first give your life to God, it is, it seems like this, this is, I wish I could like save that moment and just like keep it mm-hmm. and just have that attitude and like aura around me the whole time. Because I didn't, I didn't realize that it could go away. Like I didn't realize we that, call like it the honeymoon phase. Yes, <laughs> yes. I didn't realize that, like that could end, mm. and I could just start thinking the way that I used to again. Right. It was yeah. a very big shock to me when I was like, "Oh, like I don't stay this like God centered yeah. pure person forever," <laughs> you know. So, and I didn't understand when other Christians were doing things that I didn't like agree with because I'm like, how could how you could do you this? Even... How could you wear <laughs> right. this? How could you even post this Playboy Cardi song? <laughs> um, but like, it's like, it, it's just, you just, it's a very sacred thing and it needs to be nurtured. Like that environment, yeah. like you can't just go about when it like willy nilly, mm. like thinking that you're just going to stay in his presence all the time. Right. And I think that's what I thought but because I was secluding myself in the summer in my room reading the Bible all the time, obviously I'm going to curate that environment. Mm. I didn't realize that when I went back to college, Get it's going to be much, right. much harder. Yep. And I'm around more people and I'm like talking to different people. And it almost made me want to not talk to anybody ever again because it was like, 
I can't have anybody infiltrate this No, nah, for like, real. Yeah, you be thinking like you in some box. Like, yeah. no, I can't yeah. talk to them. Like, I'm yeah. too holy, too I righteous. I know. Like, yeah, like, yeah. no, they're too dirt. <laughs> right? No, seriously. Like, I can't. I literally said that in a video. I think like, oh, I have nobody to eat lunch with because like, I can't sit with the people that yeah. I used yeah. to. And it's like, I, I don't know. It's just like, that's just my biggest lesson is that you you have to do the work mm -hmm. to continue to remain in that space. It yeah. just doesn't stay like that forever. No. And there will be moments where like it it just won't look like it did when you first discovered God. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, no, I think yeah. I think there's a lot of intentionality that comes along with it. I think that's a common misconception a lot of people have about the faith and why I feel like some people do end up falling away is because mm -hmm. they think, you know, I make this decision and then you know, that's it. Yeah. I'm not going to get tempted anymore. The thoughts yes. are going to go away. So, yeah, most definitely. Um, and then, exactly. like, some people, I guess, they'll even, like, probably question, like, their salvation or how right. close God is to them. Because yeah. it's like, oh, like, because we just did um, an episode that said, was it I Miss the Old Me? I Miss the Old Me. Mm. And it was basically about how I kind of mentioned, like, sometimes, like, in my experience, I came to God or whatever. And then, like, it was, like, a three-month period where I wasn't struggling or dealing with the mm. things that I did. Mm. And so, like, there was a moment where I was feeling very tempted to go back to these things. And I was like, oh, bro, am I really saved? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, y'all, like, what yeah, did I do yeah. wrong? You yeah, know what I, know, I mean? Yeah. But it goes back to the fact that you have to, like, really put in that work to sustain that. And I didn't know that because it was like, everything was smooth. Like right. you said, because I was secluded, too. Like, I wasn't yes. going out. I was yeah. literally in my room all the time, like, every weekend mm -hmm. and whatnot. And then, like, I was starting to go out more and these things started coming back. Mm -hmm. But it's just, like, uh, keeping yourself, like, disciplined and not getting caught up in, like, the feeling. And like yeah. the obedience is like that continual choice in despite of what you feel. Right. Yes. So I think yes. that's fire. Um, but I like that you mentioned that you kept the episode up um, mm -hmm. on your podcast. What was it called? The uh, <laughs> Drugs You Should Try. try it. <laughs> because you you got high last weekend. Well, oh. maybe maybe not last week and probably a couple, a couple weekends ago to this ago. point. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not it's not the fact that like you got high, mm. but it's the fact that it's like you went on your podcast and then like was very open about this experience mm -hmm. that you had, right? Yeah. And like I think we're pretty transparent and vulnerable in our podcast. So I was like, that's different. Yeah. I don't know. Hey, I don't know. I was like, that's different. <laughs> that's different. So like, what? What like provokes that type of like transparency? Like where were you at making that? Like why did you feel like led to go in that direction to be so just like open? Um, and even yeah. like keeping up like those old videos and stuff that because I mean it's the journey that you've documented. It's mm -hmm. like what that episode in particular, but what what did yeah. yeah everything going up into that? Um, I feel like I get this question a lot where just people are just like, don't you think you say too much? <laughs> And I'm like, no. And I just, I realized like, oh, other people wouldn't say it. Um, so like, it's just been a common like theme where people are like, are you sure? Like, why would you yeah. say that? Or aren't you too open? Um, and I made an episode a while ago. And I, th I think the title was like, none of me is mine to keep. Mm -hmm. And I think That's it hard. was just talking about how, like, I feel like when people go through things, they pers well me too, but like they personalize it, and you something happened to you, and then you're like, this happened to me, and like it's just a part of me, and I need to like either hide it or keep it or yeah. like you know what I mean? Like this is just like this happened to me, and I feel like when things happen to me, I I start to distance myself from it. I just think that it's an experience, like it's not who I am. And it's not something I should be wearing like a backpack like everywhere I go, like all these things that happen to me. Like I kind of just distance myself from a lot of my experiences where I look at it as like like in a third person point of view. Right. Um, so then it makes it easier to talk about because it's like it's not it's not really me. It's just like this that I mm -hmm. this thing that I did. Yeah. And th you know? And I think that a lot of people are like christian um like influencers or like podcasts or anything um one of the things that makes it hard is because we tend to be like wow these people are like perfect and right. they just yeah. do everything so right and i can't imagine them ever being angry or ever like doing something like that i you know i mm -hmm. think it's against yeah. so i think that was also my motivation was just kind of like showing that it's normal and i i'm I say a lot of things on my podcast that like 
it was just, it really was just one of them. I was a bit scared though, mm. because I made such a big deal about quitting smoking mm. that it yeah. was like, why would you make such a big deal about it only to just do it again a year later? Right. But it just was just to show that like, it it's just part, it's normal. And we shouldn't, yeah, it's, it's not good to go back on like sacrifices you made mm. or promises that you made, but like, it's it's part of the human experience. And if I can make somebody feel like heard or like seen and like not alone in this, then like that's my job. And I, I think that about a lot of things that happen to me or things that I talk about on the podcast where other people just wouldn't is because like, because I know I'm not the only one. Like right, I know I right. cannot be the only one. Yeah. So if just like even one person can relate, it's like, okay, that's all I need. And I think that like, you go through things to be able to help other people go through them as well. And if you went through something and you learned from it and then you keep it to yourself, what's that doing for anybody? Right. Like you're not helping anybody by keeping those things to yourself. So that's why I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I'm not, I shouldn't have to keep any of this. If that makes sense. No, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. I remember I heard something once and said that, <clears throat> that uh, God uses broken vessels to pour living water out of, mm. and the sense that, um, like every your testimony is like meant for someone else's breakthrough, right? Essentially, and so like obviously keeping those experiences and things that you go like to yourself may leave someone else like it's, alone in that, yes, right? And yeah. then also, especially in our space, I think mm. it's it's across it's the much board, harder. but yeah, <laughs> it, it is. In it's our space, harder. it's just like that idea of like being like that perfect yes. Christian, particularly like. Yeah whenever you reach some level of like notoriety, like mm, in the space. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. And so I remember, um, I think sometimes people get like that. I don't know, like God complex, but like maybe their pride gets in the way yeah. of like their pr platform and like that perception they have to keep. Because for me, like I've definitely been in moments where there's things like I may have wanted to go back to or do, mm -hmm. but I didn't, but it wasn't, my heart wasn't in the right place. Like mm -hmm. it wasn't pure because I wasn't doing it for God. It was because, mm -hmm. oh, oh, I have yeah, this platform. Yes, how are they yes, going right? to like, see I, me? How are they going to yeah. see this? How are they going to react? Like yeah. I'm like this Christian godly man that I have to, now, yeah. you know, deep down, I know I want to, but in that moment, that wasn't my motivation. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so I wanted to ask you, have you ever been in a moment where you've probably like lived righteously, mm -hmm. like to the point of your platform rather than actually trying to yes, please God? Yes, all the time, like all the time. <laughs> literally all the time and it's 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 not a good thing but i feel like it's just inevitable mm -hmm. like when you're having people dm you like oh my gosh you brought me to christ right? or like you helped me so much with my walk mm -hmm. and then you're like oh wow okay there's people looking at me now 100 and now i like there's it feels like a code of conduct Ooh. that's like you just have to abide by yeah. and it's not clear what it is but it's just like nothing to make anybody upset. Mm. So like I will be wanting to like post a song that I'm listening to. And it's like, no, I can't post this song. Like, oh it's not my goodness. Like, no, yeah. why has that happened so many times to me? Right? I kid you not. Like, what are yeah. they gonna say about yes. this? Like, yo, he's yeah. lost his salvation. I, 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 know, I know. I immediately overthink it. Oh, I can't post this Drake song. Uh, <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. But you know, like people everyone's listening to it as right, well. Right. But like you just have, you just trying to maintain an image. And sometimes it's good because like, if we did everything we wanted to do all the time, then like, it's just like, we're, we're very like flip floppy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if we showed that, then it wouldn't be like a clear picture of like what, um, what Christianity should look like. But also there's no clear picture of what it should look like, you know? But because I think people think that they know what it should look like, um, then it's like if you don't look like that then it's like bad right. but that's also something I like about you guys because you have the ability to and I was going to mention this in my episode but you have like the ability to connect with people without revealing too much of your personal lives and I don't know if you do it on purpose but I was like thinking earlier I was like I literally know nothing about them <laughs> but I've listened to every single episode and it's like you can you can bring in a community of people that relate on one topic yeah. without like getting into like intricate yes like, yeah, yeah, into yeah, yeah, the yeah. personal life is it on purpose <laughs> like or no I don't feel like I've ever went into an EP with that mindset of like okay. I don't want to share too no, much no not I, even on episodes just like on in like general. Instagram oh yeah no I think that's just the way I am. okay, okay, okay. Wait, you talking about like a personal Instagram yeah 
Oh, yeah, I'm just... It's, Our episodes, to just Yeah, it's way. interesting because, like, I'm I'm such a private person. Mm. Like, I get on... I kind of mentioned this, uh, I think, in one of the episodes that we just did. But I'm very much a private person. I actually really don't like... It's funny, I have a podcast. I speak every week. I'm more reserved, mm. right? Like, I'm always in my head. I'm observing things. Yeah. Like, just getting gathering perspective. I don't actually, like, speak too much, like, in my personal life, like, sometimes. Because mm. um, I'm just always thinking. And so, um, yeah, I usually like to keep some things, like, to myself. I'm but, the same way. Like, I, sometimes I don't even really necessarily like getting on, like, Instagram. and But I feel like a part of me, I need to because yeah. I have the podcast and need to promote and stuff like that. But yeah. I'm the same way. Would you say you're, like, an, an introverted, extrovert, extroverted type of person? <laughs> um, uh, I think recently I've been more extroverted. But, like, when it comes to online, I, for some reason, I don't think that like social media is real. Like I don't think that's, I know people are following me and I know like it says who saw my stories, yeah. mm. but it's, it doesn't compute in my head that like they actually saw the story, right. you know? So like I would say something on a, a YouTube video and someone in real life will be like, oh yeah, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, how do you know that? You They're like, that? you said it on YouTube. And I was like, I said that on YouTube. Right. <laughs> it's like, I don't, I don't, I forget that people are actually watching. Which is kind of scary, um, but like I really forget that it's like real life people, and it's yeah. not when I meet someone in re- person they're like, oh, I watch, I watch your YouTube. And I'm like, oh, like this is real because you only see the numbers. Right, that's so a fact. That's a fact. It makes me feel like I can just say anything, and also some part of it, I really just, I just really don't care mm-hmm. because I think that, um, it's, I'm not. Like some special, like person, like all these things that like have I don't know if that makes sense. Like anything that is going on in my life is not anything that nobody's ever seen before. That's what I'm trying to say. You. Like yeah. it's just all part of the ordinary. Mm-hmm. So it's like I'm just gonna put it out there. So I don't really, I just kind of have a barrier with it where I don't see the the realness of it yeah which can be like a bit scary and it's not until like someone else is next to me and they i record something with them and they're like oh take that out i don't look good and i'm like why it's just youtube and they're like karen like it's not just youtube you're you have people watching Mm -hmm. you know so yeah where does where does that like i don't care come (laughs) from though was it always like that i think so I think so. I don't, I really can't tell you how mm. or why I think that way, but it's just like that. I really don't understand it. Yeah. So, you feel like, so I guess like early on YouTube, like, and just in general now, in terms of like opinions of like people, mm. like how much weight did mm. that hold there now? What's that process been like huh. for you? Yeah. And with everything that you do. Because, I mean, you got yeah. so many eyes on so many different things. I'm sure people's perspective, thoughts, comments mm. on the brand, podcast, yes. YouTube, all of that. Uh, One question. Do you guys get negative comments sometimes? <clears throat> Maybe on TikTok. I mean, or... here here, here and there. Okay. I don't think we've reached that level of like, yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah. see anything crazy. That net cast yeah. it so far right. where we're getting that negative yet. But yeah. here and there, yeah. That's what I was thinking because I feel like I don't get that much shaking. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I feel like I'm doing something wrong. Like, hmm, why is nobody hating? Right. <laughs> Nobody's hating I don't like, me, some, like. <laughs> I don't like some haters, please. But yeah, I don't get many ne- negative comments. So mostly the feedback is good, which is why like I'm okay with things. And then maybe if I got more negative comments, I would just think about what people are saying. But I also didn't think about people's opinions until I became Christian. Or like not became Christian, until I fully gave my life to Christ is when I started thinking about how other people see me. At first I didn't think about it um, until I like fully started submerging where I was like, okay, now I have to look a certain way and act a certain way and only say certain things. Like how would people think of me if I do, if I did this and this and this. So. The fact that you don't care, like it shows in your through your content as well, and I've noticed that because even in the the episode about um like I got high last weekend, you said something. You were like, I didn't come here to apologize to you guys. <laughs> no, and that so was when, fire. I, when I, I was like, damn, I was like, that's a bar. I was like, because that I really that really showed your heart and the fact yeah. that you I don't care about your guys' opinion. At the mm. end of the day, it's like 
what does God have to say? Mm. I only ha- I'm, I'm only answering the one. You know what I yeah. mean? So I just, it definitely shows through your content for sure. Definitely. Yeah, and like I feel like sometimes, like I said, it's not specific to our space, but like just generally, whenever you're like celebrity, whether mm. that be like a list or like all the way down, and you just reach some type of fame, and people have admiration for your gift and what you do, mm. it's almost like your humanity got gets stripped from oh, you. Oh yes. And I wanted to like hear yeah. your thoughts on it because I think sometimes like it's. Like, oh, okay. Like, yo, you have this yeah. platform. You have this many followers, yeah. this many subscribers. Like, how are you depressed? How are you frustrated? Right. How are you sad? How are you yeah. dealing with this? How did you fall into that? Yeah. You know, and like people just like just forget that we're all like the same type yeah. of individuals exactly. or whatever. So how do you, have you seen a lot of that or feel that? Yeah, honestly, I feel that. And it's more from the audience that is interested in my Christian content. Like, I get, yes. you know what I mean? Yes. Which no, is I so do. weird because I would, I don't even know, but the one thing that's saying that to me is that I had my sister model, like, my debt to self shirt, okay. and she made it into a crop top. Like, it's a full length tank top, yeah. but she, it was the Jesus Freak tank, but she made it into a crop top and she was wearing a skirt. And that was the most amount of, I think, hate I've ever gotten. And it was like, oh that's my, weird. I was like, what? Yeah. I, I couldn't believe it. And then I think even just here and there, like people just come into me and they, and so I, I feel like maybe they think they're doing the right thing, but it just doesn't come across as the right thing at yeah. all. And people forget that you are human. Mm-hmm. Like you're, you're not a robot that's like programmed to just do Christian things. And mm-hmm. say, you know what I mean? Like you're an actual person and you have opinions and thoughts and, other people around you and it's just like just because i dress this way doesn't mean everybody around me like is supposed to look like me or think like me or say anything like me and even coming down to like the friends that i have because a lot of my friends when i was doing youtube were secular yeah so it was like now like oh i can't even hang out with like these people and like they can't see me Mm -hmm. with this person or like people hitting me up checking up on like oh how's your friend this like I I I believe that you bring him to Christ, and I'm like, like what are you talking are you? about? That'd be you know so what I mean? weird. Yeah, yeah. So definitely, I have experienced a lot of that. So we kind of talked about it. So that kind of see, I don't even know if I want to call it a standard because I mm. think it's like there's a pressure that comes with it. Then there's also a standard as like someone with a platform mm. that you have to maintain. So like, do you think it's more? like positive or negative do you think it like restricts you more or mm. like in terms of like what we talked about earlier like living righteously for other people instead yeah. of god um which i think it's is natural sometimes when it comes to because you you look at something and you'll be like oh i probably shouldn't do that yes. because of the position i'm in yeah. which isn't always the worst thing in the world no. but like we talked about with you know we might want to post a song mm. or whatever but what does that look like like mm-hmm. i don't know do you think that's like restrictive yeah like i mean because i think some of it is restrictive and some of it is warranted yes. you know what i mean like yo why can't i post this song mm-hmm. you know i think some stuff is like to me gets really silly and i have this conversation with uh, john and eric all the time yeah. of like dang what's the point who's we're just, john and eric uh our, our best our best friends oh, yeah, 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 yeah live in nashville but sense. um i'm like yo when is the point where we're just kind of like going to like break free and just do our thing because mm-hmm. sometimes i feel like we're cen- not censored mm-hmm. but it's like okay like yeah there's some things like oh they may react yeah. this way or that way <laughs> it's like it kind of keeps you in check mm-hmm. in a little mm-hmm. in a little way um but then it feels like you're performing and it feels like mm-hmm. you're not living as a christian but you're just acting like one right to so you're putting on a sh- it, it's not a really a show because that's who you are but it feels like you can't get out of character. Mm. And uh, some of that is, um, keeps you in check, but I think there's, I would always say there's more pros than cons. Mm-hmm. I would never okay. say that there's more cons, but the pros, I mean, the cons are annoying. But I think the Big. pros are that, okay, I see it this way. Like, when I wanted to give my life to God, the people that are around me, I just really thought they were so weird and corny. Like, and all the <laughs> all the all the Christian stuff that I saw yeah. online, I just thought like that's just so like weird. Like no, I don't want to look yeah. like that. Uh. Um, and I think part of that is also stopped me from wanting to put both feet in and go because I'm like, oh my gosh, if I give my life to God and become as like God fearing as these people, 
I'm going to start being weird. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going nah. to start dressing weird be and bot. being like, oh, right. yeah, seriously. Right. But then I think, um, uh, I think during that time, I saw, I was introduced to Montel Fish's music. Yeah. And I think Fire. he also has YouTube videos. I don't know if you've ever seen his YouTube videos. Yeah, they're oh, amazing. Yeah. He's yeah, yeah, insane. Yeah. I know. But I think seeing that was like, oh, like you can just be yourself. And still be Christian at the same time. Like, I can still be cool and Mm -hmm. dress nice and, like, look the way I want to, but still be Christian. So I think um, not falling into that, like, performative Mm -hmm. stuff and just authentically being the way you want to, but still maintaining, like, that Christian values, that's what will draw more people Mm -hmm. as opposed to trying to fit into this Christian box because nobody's going to see themselves in you. If you are like perfect cookie cutter Christian, because nobody's yeah. like that. And I think people try to be like that because they think that's what will draw more people in is like, if I act like I don't right. do anything bad at all, but no one's going to see themselves in you if you're not even being yourself. Like, so how, how is, how are you going to draw somebody in if they can't even relate to anything that you do? Um. Um, so yeah, just showing like, authenticity and like being like oh i can still like be modest and just have my outfits look fun instead mm-hmm. of like whatever it is yeah. that other people yeah. are wearing no nah, it's so interesting and we talked about that one time on our episode it's called rated e mm. and I, my point was um we we're talking about like evangelism and stuff because some people like try to get in that perfectionism mindset thinking yes. that it, that's the way to draw but like um people don't invest in what they don't see themselves in mm-hmm. right. i think is what i said yeah and so like you said you're inherently like I don't know, misrepresenting, I don't know, like yourself one and then yes. really like what your relationship with God looks like when you're saying like, oh, no, I'm perfect. Like I haven't fell, fall or like whatever. Um, yeah, something, it, something. Uh, my bad, I mean to cut you off, but something someone told me once I thought was really good is like your personality, your sense of humor, things you like and dislike, those are all like gifts from God. And like mm-hmm. he wants to use those in like your personal mm-hmm. ministry and whatever you're doing, you know what I mean? I think that's even... Wow, I I love your brand by the way. Thank that's you. Itself. I think yeah, yeah, and that's one of, that's yeah. one of the reasons why I feel like it's so good because you weren't living to that like people's standard mm. of like okay, I have to make it look a certain way or whatever. Mm. Like you were like no, like this is me, yeah. my personality, what I like, dislike, and you translated that into your ministry. You know what I mean? So yeah, because yeah. people like try to force the whole like Jesus thing, yeah, not in not not in like a, a I'm in more negative sense of like okay, like oh if I'm making this brand. Or if I'm making like a piece of art mm. or a song or this, oh my goodness, it has to sound like I'm making a message or it has to have like uh, this particular yeah. like crown in it or yes. like whatever, right? But like understanding like you can't put God in a box. No. And I think that's like the beauty of you and Montel and like mm-hmm. all these different creatives I'm now seeing. I think our generation is really doing it. Yeah. It's like so expanding too, that, right? that aspect of creativity because mm-hmm. I think sometimes... I don't know if you do you think it can be in a box, people put it in a box? Yeah, hundred percent. I think that um TikTok too I have a love hate relationship with TikTok, but um I think I, I go on TikTok and I see someone that like to me and just how I've grown up, I'm like, that person doesn't look like a Christian. And then just the words coming out of their mouth is like ev like so godly. Yeah. And it's like, oh wow, like we're actually changing the narrative mm-hmm. little by little. Um, there's this girl on TikTok, I don't know her name, but she just has the coolest fashion sense and she mm. just wears like, I don't, I don't know if you've come across her, but it's just like crazy looking, <laughs> not gonna lie, like eyeliner and like pinks and like okay. all of this. And a lot of people in her comments are like, why are you wearing that? But like, you can see from the heart mm-hmm. that like, that's who she is. Yeah. And I think that we are doing a good job of trying to change the narrative, but it's been a narrative for so long that it it requires some work. Mm-hmm. No, because I, I even see that myself sometimes. Like yes. I'll see something on my free page or I'll see somebody like um who proclaims to be a follower of Christ mm. or whatever, maybe preaching or whatever, and I see the way that they look or come off and I'm like, yo, I don't know. Yes. But I have to catch myself. Yes. Like, yo, like, why, why am I, I even in that why am I in that box? Yeah, yeah like so, why am I yeah. there now? So I totally yeah. I totally know what you're and saying. And that's also why I love Matthew Stevenson because I just love oh the way my, he's yo, so free. <laughs> he's yeah, so free. Yeah, I can't wait yeah. for Sunday. Hopefully you can come. I don't know if you Yes, to, no, but. actually I think I'll be able to. I was just talking about it um earlier and I was like, yeah, I think I should be able to because yeah. it's just a commute. Yeah. That's fine. No, but cause his ministry is literally all about like just grace. 
Real talk. Yeah. And what he always says is like grace is like a magnet. Mm. And, it, and and like what some people don't like different ministries, churches, or even like Christians specific, specifically <laughs> is the fact that um, a magnet attracts everything. Mm. It's not, um, mm. what is it? It's not a, discriminatory to what it attracts, uh, right? Yeah. And so like that's what his ministry is. Like it doesn't matter what your background is, what you've yeah. done, what you've gone through, what you did last night before you came in here. Like this is a place of grace where you're mm-hmm. open, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know? Um and so, yeah, just kind of going back to that whole yeah. thing of, like, breaking down what this stereotypical, like, Christian has to look like or has right. to be and letting people be themselves, like, in this faith walk, which yeah. I think is, like, like everything. I also think I like that he, I'd never heard him talk about grace like that, but also I think that he's someone that doesn't um, ex- just, like, accept that you are just going to stay in, like, whatever state you're in oh, yeah. or whatever. But- and I think a lot of churches or like just the churches I've seen in New York City, honestly, is just there's a lot of talk or preaching about grace and like it doesn't matter what you did yesterday. But then it's just like every Sunday you're saying that. And it's like like nobody's actually changing and nobody, there's no preach, like redemption is not like spoken about or like repentance. I mean, Mm -hmm. repentance is not spoken about. Mm -hmm. So then it's just a lot of like, People who just think I can just stay the way I am and God right, loves me, which is whatever. true, He does. But it's like it's not doing anybody any good to right, just like kind of stay. But like I like that He is very convicting. 100%. That's what it's missing, like conviction. Yeah, and mm-hmm. people convict. So, so have, go ahead. have you uh, not found a home church here in New York yet? Actually, I think I have. Okay. It's hard to commit. Because I think I was just looking for my church in Massachusetts here. Mm-hmm. And I just had to come to a point where it's like, you won't find that. Yeah. Because it, they're not the, it's not the exact same people. It's not the exact same person. Mm-hmm. So if you're just, I would never find a church if I'm just looking for my old church here. Right. Yeah, exactly. um, so I just had to be like, just accept that I'm in a different state yeah. now. And I just need to find one that like resonates with me. And I, I've been to so many, like every Sunday I'm going to a different one mm-hmm. and I'm like pros and cons. And I, there's just something I don't right, like always, about each and is. every one. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I actually found one that is super close by my house. Um, I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called Saints Church. Saints Church? Saints Church. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's, it has a good like following, um, kind of modern, but. I've only been there three times, and each time there's been a different preacher, so I don't even really know who yeah, the main preacher yeah. is. But like, it's just like a twenty minute walk, so like. No, that's the thing. Yeah. You New Yorkers are different. I was about to ask. I'm I was, glad you, I was, I'm glad you I was on up. the phone the other day, and because I'm, I'm seeing somebody tonight, yeah, and I, we were like trying to figure out where we're going or whatever, and they're putting it in the maps, and they're like, "Oh yeah, it's only a thirty minute walk, <laughs> only." Like I said, 30 only 30 minutes. minutes I don't like 30 minutes. We don't walk. That's we don't crazy. walk anywhere. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's so crazy. But, so um, you just be walking? I mean, I you just have to get used to it. That's fair. Because that's how I that's how I was when I would come here come, and like visit. visit and, yeah. and they'd be like, oh yeah, it's just like a 20 minute walk. Or it's just like a mile or like whatever. <laughs> and I'm just like, no, I'm not. Like, can I Uber? They're like, no, it's going to be fun. And I was just like walking <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> no, seriously. And you just like, you just get used to it because you're mm-hmm. walking everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of New York though, you mentioned something in one of your EPs about mm-hmm. how um, you, or maybe it was a YouTube video. It might not have been on the podcast. How you wanted to be a seed again. And you were talking about how, oh, right. you were talking about how your freshman year in college, you were a seed. Mm-hmm. And then like what you Throughout your college uh, career, I guess you became like a. I think it was a fruit. Yeah, was an analogy fruit, you used yeah. And how you wanted to become a seed again, and yeah. how that has to work is like you have to be broken and get get yes. to the seed and be planted again into something yeah. new. And how you wanted to move to New York because someone told you that like the city would break you. <laughs> oh yeah, it's breaking. So me yeah, for I was just asking sure. you how, that to explain that. How, to yeah. Yeah, yeah. how has the process been as well? Um yeah, I think I was what I was looking for was growth, and like I think I was just saying like. Yeah, when I started college, mm-hmm. I just, you know, fresh out of high school yeah. and like you don't really know anything and you're planted in somewhere for four years and you're experiencing like people from all walks of life. And I think I had one of the wildest, like worst freshman years ever. 
Um, and I was telling someone the story on Friday and they were like, I am so sorry. But <laughs> it was too much. Yeah. But I, it was life changing mm-hmm. because even though it was bad, it, it makes you who you are. Like it For shapes, fact, yeah. you know. And then sometimes I think I just really never had accountability or mm-hmm. like had to ever face the consequences of my own actions. So learning that and being like, oh, this can happen if you do this or like. Negative things can happen if you make the de- wrong decisions mm-hmm. or stuff like that. And just having to face that and learning that, I, it was, yeah, it was life-changing. And I think that um, when I went back home and graduated and I was in Massachusetts, I felt like I have gotten everything that I can from Massachusetts. I don't see myself growing anymore Imagine, in this yeah. state because my town is just... at. So small, yeah. and even my school, it was a large school, but it was in a small town in like the west of Massachusetts. Got there was you. nothing yeah. around. Yeah. So I just felt like I've be- I've become as ripe as a fruit can get here. And like mm. the only thing that's going to happen now is that I start to rot. If I don't grow Gosh, that again. That makes so much sense. Yeah. I love that. So then I was like, you know, I just want to be... In the place that's going to really like give me a run for mm-hmm. my money because mm-hmm. I need to learn again. Yeah, I feel like I I learned all that I needed to learn in Massachusetts. I was like, okay, I need to learn again, and I I was asking for way too much because it's it's just been way too much. Like I think I've just I've been har- having probably the hardest month or periods of my life. <laughs> and Wait, so you graduated? Earlier this year. I graduated mm-hmm. in May. Okay, graduated right. in May. Then you moved to New York. I moved to New York in September. During that time, I was just trying to figure out, like, what do I want to do? Do yeah. I want to go full in on, like, social media right. and see where it takes me? Um, which is really ultimately what I want to do and wanted to do. Um, but I couldn't see myself doing that where I was living because there was just nobody doing anything like that around. Mm, yeah. So it was like, how are you even going to grow? Like it worked once, but it's not going to work again. And one of my favorite preachers, his name is Joshua Salmon. I feel like you guys should really listen to him. I mm-hmm. tell everybody about him, but he has a really thick Nigerian accent. So sometimes you're like, what, what are is you he saying? saying? <laughs> yes, but he is so good. And mm-hmm. I'll send you um, a link of like the best sermon he's ever had that gotcha. I listen. It's called The Law of transformation but he said that people will only clap for you for something once once you do that and they clap for you they're not going to clap if you do the same thing again you have to keep getting better so um it was like i can't just stay here yeah do the same things i'm doing and keep expecting applause they've already seen it so i need to go somewhere that i can grow again do something bigger yeah what's been like the difficulties of being here since yeah. September, what's that? What is that like? Mm, I think how's it grown you? Yeah, challenged you. I think it's just living by myself, or I mean, I live with roommates, but like that's still by myself. I don't have my parents anywhere. Yeah. I don't have my sister, so even just figuring out what to eat for dinner, like oh, I have to go get these groceries, groceries? and make it, <laughs> and like um, just roommate relationships. Um, do you know your roommates or these are just random? Uh, they were, well, I met one of them at a church that I was visiting. Um, and that's a church Lucas goes to. Okay. And uh, I was, I visit there sometimes, but I met her there and she came up to me. We were just talking. And then at that time, I didn't think I wanted to move. So in conversation, she just tells me that like one of her roommates moved out. Mm-hmm. And then that's when it dawned on me like, oh. Don't don't look for a new roommate. Like I'll, right. I'll move yeah, in. Yeah. So that was like I feel like that was kind of a goth thing to just get me here. But um, yeah, I didn't really know them. It was just sh- strange, and it's just learning to live with different people, mm-hmm. realizing people are not like they don't think the same as you, yeah. and having to be understanding and patient, and then also working. Because I never, ever wanted to work for someone ever again after doing social media for so long that having to take orders or having (laughs) someone to tell me what to do. And I've literally gotten into like 
four arguments already and I've been working there for four, <laughs> like for two months. Yeah. And I'm already like fighting with my boss. Yeah, and people then, don't even understand yeah. like that transition of like being able to be on your own time, your own schedule. Yes. Right. And then like that switch. Like yeah. I know it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And it also has had me questioning like, what does the future look like? You know what I mean? Because mm. am I just going to stay here? And, like, maybe keep going up the ladder of, like, the corporate, corporate ladder, ladder, in a sense. Yeah. Or, like, when it, when is the podcast going to finally click that I don't have to work somewhere else? Mm -hmm. Like, what is... It's just everything is so uncertain. Mm -hmm. I think that's what's making it hard. Is mm -hmm. that, like, I just don't know. In a sense, I, I'm doing things, but I don't know what I'm doing. And I don't know what's going to come of it and i'm like is anything going to come of it you know mm -hmm. so just like that uncertainty and just having to be like literally that's life in your 20s is uncertainty yeah and even life in general is yeah. uncertainty and just having to be like okay with not knowing it not knowing have future. you ever like whenever you were doing youtube like mm -hmm. in that everything like through college was there like that same feeling of uncertainty or doubt ever or is it more like dang it's just gonna be a sure thing mm, it's so funny there was n there was no uncertainty you know yeah i know i Which get is it yeah so weird there uh -huh. was no uncertainty i just knew that i was gonna do it and i was gonna make it and that was just like for sure mm -hmm. and this i think part of that mentality got me to where i was because 100%. it was like you know for it's sure yeah <laughs> yeah but then you slowly start getting there and then like the I think the doors keep opening wider and mm -hmm. now it's like, oh, now there's what you, what was a goal for you now looks so small and you you yeah. see people who are doing other things that are bigger than that. And you're like, oh, like, will I even be able to ever get there? Right. But then when you started at zero, you had so much faith mm -hmm. and belief mm -hmm. and then you get to where you were just dreaming. It's like, yo, and this then, ain't really what I thought. Like, it's yeah. ain't really, this is a little dot. I know, I know. <laughs> I know. And then, like, I remember a, a point in time when, like, people stopped watching just because of, like, more of the Christian stuff. I would be so angry. And I'm like, oh, I only got 10K views. I'm like, do you hear yourself? Like, mm -hmm. that's 10,000 people, you yeah, know? Fact. So it's even if it's just a thousand, like, that's still, it's still something. And I mm -hmm. think we take it for granted. So part of that uncertainty is just also knowing, like, there's more out there yeah, that I mm -hmm. want. And, it's just like, am I going to get it? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Do you still get um, wrapped up in like the views? Um, or numbers? Um, vanity van vanity metrics? Yeah. When when I was in that like that to self like seclusion period, I didn't. Mm -hmm. I was like, everyone's going to hear about God and I don't care if you like it or not. All and right. like everyone must hear this message. And so I didn't care about views at all. And then I think when I that's stuff was over and I was now settling into my position as like a Christian content creator and it's not necessarily but like just that space then I started being like oh like I'm not making as much money as I was <laughs> Yo, what you know, you know? <laughs> exactly like like this brand worked with me last year and they don't want to work they with me work again no mm -hmm. It'd be like that, and yeah. it's like what happened so that's just what yeah, and I think it's common because you you think that, oh, I'm with God now. So now, like, it's going to explode. Yeah, yeah like, but there's still a reality of the world that you yes, live in. Yes, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. You think that, like, now that you've given your life to Christ, like, it's just going to be an overflow. <laughs> <laughs> the favor. <laughs> of abundance. And then you're like, abundance oh, wait, no, that's actually not what's happening at all. Mm -hmm. um, and just, and then it's like, Okay, but I can't go back to making the same content that I was. Right. So just having to trust that if God is the one that revealed himself to me in a way that I impacted the stuff that I was making, then for sure he's going to see me through to where he wants me to mm -hmm. be. For like, I just have to trust that and just not go by the world's standard of, like, what's success. Mm -hmm. You know, just, like, trusting that. It's just, it's... Whatever it is is gonna happen. Even if it doesn't, it's fine. Yeah. No, it's what not, it's what fine. is um? How do you feel about being a Christian mm, content, content creator? creator? What that that term word? Mm. The space. I I. You feel like you are one. I don't think I am. Why Why not? 
only because I don't want to be. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that um, I think other people probably see me as that, but um, uh, I don't know, like. Cause I I feel like I talk about other things, mm -hmm. but like not really because everything mm. you can't help but talk about God. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? It's, it's not like you're even trying to. So even though it'll be like a normal vlog, like it'll end up being like a sermon. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if maybe probably people probably think I'm a Christian content creator, which is fine. But like I also honestly think sometimes that that's a better thing because you have a. Um, you have a market, you have an audience and you know who your you know who your target audience mm -hmm. is and even though you want to bring other people to God like it's I don't know how to say it like there's nothing better than being in the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and doing things in the kingdom of God like mm -hmm. why would you want to be other Right. Yeah. That makes sense. So it's just a back and forth in my head. Sometimes I'm like, I don't want to be put in a box where I have to only make Christian content. But like other times so that's like, that's where God is. Why would you want to be anywhere yeah. else? So So mm -hmm. who like who is who is your audience? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I don't know. Um people because just like nothing or people. So like Yeah. Because for us, mm. I think it comes, sometimes goes to challenge because like a part of our mission and what we want to do is like we want to like edify the church, but also like impact the culture. Mm. And so I, I get very um, not frustrated, but I don't know, maybe concerned. I don't know. Just like I'm back and forth as well yeah. when it comes to like, yo, is this a quote unquote Christian podcast? I mean, of course, yes. like at its inception of what we do, like it's always yeah. going to be faith centered, like and like um, with the focus of like advance of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. But it's not just for christians mm -hmm. right yes. like i also want it to yeah. be a space where like yo if you're okay. an atheist agnostic or like you're a misfit yeah. on the edge lukewarm this is where you can come and gain something that may help you like mm -hmm. in your journey or whatever mm -hmm. and so that's why like it's not even and sometimes people get worried about it because it's like oh you're trying to like denounce like christianity mm -hmm. and god and like you know what i mean you're like ashamed of that title no it's like the uh i don't know it's just the allure of it. if i say it's a christian podcast it's like to someone else like in the world does that They're mean yeah, it's yeah. like just only for Christians. It's like yeah. that's why I go back. It's like the term itself. That's kind of yeah. like yeah. I don't know you think. said like <clears throat> in the kingdom was like the specific thing, <clears throat> the specific words that you used. And I was watching this interview with Devon Franklin, and um, he had said there's a difference between doing something in the kingdom and doing something for the kingdom, mm -hmm. and how you can be doing both at the same time. So I feel like that's kind of like where I'm at in the sense that like yes, I'm doing it in the kingdom. And I'm a part of my audience is Christians and, and I'm edifying the body, but I can also be doing something for the kingdom mm. at, as well as like going out, you know what I mean? Yeah. And reaching, like he was saying, like all people, all walks of life, you know what I mean? So that's when he said that, that's that's like my mindset on the whole yeah. conversation. It's hard to do it because it's like, how do you, how do you even bridge the gap? Like how that's the do challenge, you cater, right? not cater, but how do you bring other people into it mm -hmm. without... Because as soon as something is Christian, anybody else is, oh, that's I'm like that's yeah. not me. I'm secluded. I'm out of it. So like, how do you even do that without looking like the world? Because some like some that will make you look, yeah, yeah, that yeah. will make you look like just blending in if you're not careful mm -hmm. if you don't like. Strategize. But I feel like I, I feel I see pretty good examples of it mm. that that I'm Franklin of course like okay. would be one I think I would feel like you, I feel like you are I'm trying <laughs> no seriously I mean I just would every, I mean with everything that you do yeah. and even like the content of it I just mm. feel like it's not something that would like completely like you said it's always that kind of reservation like oh this may not be up my yeah. lane because it's gonna be Christian but like that's the way that you communicate and it, the way you're able to tell the story like you mentioned at the beginning mm -hmm. I think like draws people in from yeah. like anywhere and even like even with the fashion you yes. know like it's just like for me, I feel as if, like, if we're saying that we serve, like, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, like, we should be at the top mm. of every industry. Mm -hmm. Not mm. in terms of, like, fame and notoriety or recognition, but in terms of, like, the uh, quality yeah. of what we're putting out. Right. And so I mentioned that because with your brand, I feel like, yo, like, you look at it, doesn't matter if the Christian or whatever, like, mm -hmm. yo, that's tough. It's you tough. know what I mean? Like, it's it is, tough. like, people, you can't, t you mm. can't, like, look away of look away from greatness and mm. what it is. It, it no matter what the title, no matter what the title, yeah, it doesn't matter it's what great. it is. Like you operating at the highest yeah. level that you're called to is yes. going to draw 
if that, if that makes yes. sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, thank you. <laughs> That's such a good compliment. And I also think that you guys do a really good job of it because you you have like an air of familiarity in the sense that like you everyone knows I don't know, this is gonna sound bad, but like we know people someone who looks like you. Not right, in exactly, right, but like right, right, right. I know people that look like you. I know mm. people that look like you. So just that like familiarity and like the way you dress mm. and your hair and like not having to make it fit in like a different way Makes and sense. just just being yourself is like it's approachable. Mm. And even the way you speak, yeah, that's, even the way you key. speak as well about God and about the things that you go to, and you're not afraid to be like, oh, I went through this. I loved. The, I was listening to it this morning, the recent one, Am I Enough? Because that's just something mm-hmm. that like I've also been going through. And it's good to have someone that you th- respect and think that they're doing something so great. Hearing them say that, I also think that like, oh, for I'm, fact. Yeah. I, like am I doing well <laughs> enough? Yeah. And it, it's just relatable and a, it's welcoming. Mm-hmm. It's like a welcoming aura to the mm-hmm. podcast. Yeah. I think that's good yeah and that the episode am i enough um that reminds me of what you said earlier with like not thinking like social media is real mm. and that's sometimes like maybe a good or bad thing for you mm-hmm. and for me too because like you know i'll make something but i don't ever really understand or realize the impact that it's gonna have yes like yes. the when we were going through like our spotify raptor or whatever and looking at that i was like you that's guys cool. almost yeah. a million. Crazy. crazy. You know what I mean? That's but for wild. me, it's just like, oh, like it's very insignificant. Yeah. And like that's that's the negative part of it for me. Yeah. Like I devalue it and yeah. things like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that is a part of why it that can draw like people, right? It's what right. with the style what we do is very approachable. And that vulnerability, I think, is like just everything. Mm-hmm. But um what does your community look like right now in terms of in you person? talked about church. Okay. Um, friends. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, like, like people friends. like you're able to see whatever. Do you know a lot of people? In, well, I'm sure you know a lot of people in New York. I do not. That's, really? That's one thing that's been making it hard is that I literally only know my roommates, okay. my coworkers, and Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> and um, like, yeah, I know a couple people through him, but those are not my friends. You know what I mean? Just people like I'm like yeah. introduced mm-hmm. to. I just recently started going to like one church like consecutively for like, three weeks in a row. So I'll probably start going there and maybe have more of a community there. But I there's it's been very isolating and like lonely in a sense that I know people on Instagram that are in New York City, but I don't talk to any of them mm-hmm. and I don't mm-hmm. hang out with any of them. So yeah, I really just like Go to work, see my coworkers, come back, see my roommate, and that's it. And then on the weekends, hang out with my boyfriend. Have you ever thought about like reaching out to those people? Or is that like, <laughs> awkward? Because yeah. sometimes it can be awkward. Like, yeah. so. like I want to, and I okay, I have my cousin here as well. Okay. Um, so that's good. And I have one other person that I went to school with, but like nobody's really hanging out. You know what yeah. I mean? Everyone's just really doing their own things. I've Try to reach out to some people, but it's just weird. Like either we hang out once and it like it wasn't like I wasn't yeah. really feeling the vibes, or they're not. Um, I just really want godly people mm-hmm. around me right now, and like I feel like I can't, um, I can't invest time in secular friendships if that sounds bad. But I think where I am right now in life is like. I I want godly people around me, so maybe that's bad and probably contradictory to what I said earlier in this <laughs> podcast. But yeah, I feel like um, it's not relatable. Like I can't really relate mm-hmm. to with a lot yeah. of people. And I feel like the only people that I'm really going to looking for will be in the church. So that's yeah. why I was like, okay, maybe I just need to yeah. find a church and just like have that. But in New York, there's really no community. Yeah. Um, and that's also one of the things that's been making it hard. Yeah, but yeah. I, I don't I don't think that you necessarily are contradicting yourself. Mm-hmm. I think like there's there's duality to it. Like you can I think it's important that your inner circle and the people that you're yes. spending most of your time with are those individuals that are pushing exactly. you closer to what you know you need the standard you need to be held to. Yeah. Right. But in yeah. terms of like maybe like your peers or acquaintances that you still want to see right. and hang out with, you know what I mean? You, 
you are able to like you know be in those spaces with yeah. them yeah, but to a certain yeah. extent like yeah. there's a balance to that right 100%. so I, actually and so because i've been thinking about this a lot so there's this um creator youtuber his name is ruslan i don't know if you know who that is i do okay. KD. Yeah. Yeah. KD. 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 so yeah. he um he just recently went on the no jumper podcast huh. which i thought was absolutely fire okay. um so kind of going off what we're saying like would you ever do any type of like collaboration have a guest on your podcast mm. youtube with someone who may not necessarily like yeah yeah i you guys inspired me to actually start having a list of people that i want in my podcast <laughs> yeah. so on friday i was making a list and i was like what am i even gonna talk like everyone p- different people on the list were like i want to talk to them for a different reason whether it was like fashion yeah, entrepreneurship yeah. and like only maybe like three of them were christian mm-hmm. And so then that's also what was like, I was like, okay, is this a Christian podcast or like, what is it? You know what I mean? Because what am I really doing? Like, because I can't just, I feel like I can't have just like episodes here and there that are Christian. Mm-hmm. I feel like it has to permeate through everything I do. So um, yeah, I would definitely collaborate yeah. with different people that, and I think you should. I don't yeah, think you exactly. shouldn't. I think that yeah. you 100% should because- how is anybody going to see the light in you 100%. if like you're in yeah. an echo chamber of just Christians? But yeah, right, exactly. That yeah. conversation is so necessary to kind of like step out yes, and like into that. Yeah. Right? And I try and like even at work, like there's an office um speaker, and I just play worship <laughs> through all the time. And then like I think sometimes they don't realize that it's worship, but they're just like, Karen, can we change it? It's just very like mellow. We want something <laughs> hyped, then they'll put like uh, I don't know, uh, yeah. Cardi B or Drake on. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, sure. But just like having that one hour that I was just playing mm-hmm. worship in the office, like they probably don't realize that it's doing no, something. Yeah. And like just even in the in conversations, like I really like the approach that my friend Sam took on me and mm. bringing me to Christ. And I want to emulate that where I can just let people exist as themselves yeah. in my presence, but then maintain my composure right, exactly. and like my head and just and then when they leave because that's what happened to me when I left I was like I want to be like them I mm-hmm. want to talk like them I want to think yeah. like them so you don't know the impact you're having on somebody 100%. it may seem like nothing it may just seem like but they they might walk away thinking like oh like this person said this that yeah. like mm-hmm. sticks with you yeah that's super super dope so it's been a year I think I don't know. Has it? Well, you can let me know. Okay. But you um, and Lucas. Oh, my <laughs> I'm crying. Has yeah, it, it has been a year. Okay, I think I li- like mentioned uh, you yeah, mentioned like, that on your podcast. I think. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. So, like, tell me about why has that been like the long? I was really curious. Mm. Like the longest standing relationship so far. Like mm. what? Like highlights of that? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. I think the thing that is different is that he, like, when I first met him, he also had, like, a podcast, but, like, nobody was really listening. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's tough. <laughs> Not her throwing it straight. Sorry. No, it was, like, he was just posting on YouTube, and I clowned him for this, but it would have, like, nine views, and it's, like, 30 <laughs> minutes long. No, the nine views is crazy. Okay. <laughs> Shout of out Lucas, man. Just, Shout out Lucas, bro. <laughs> of him just talking, mm-hmm. but he was like, he was as vulnerable as I like mm. I would be. And even sometimes I listen, I'm like, I know only nine people listen to this, but how are you saying this yeah. out loud? You know what I mean? And he would like was admitting like, oh, like I really want to stop like hooking up with random people on the right. spot. Like I want to stop swearing. I want to yeah. stop going to parties and like. I th- I was just listening to a bunch of them and they were all just highlighting like the back and forth that mm. we have and um it was it was nice to see because a lot of people are like don't you think you say too much and it was nice to see someone also being as open and 100%. as vulnerable yeah. and I think that's why we get along so well because he doesn't think anything I say is crazy mm-hmm. or shouldn't be said mm-hmm. on a podcast or anything and he understands why I would say it. Um, he's also very godly. And um, yeah, that's necessary. Mm-hmm. Um, 
there was a lot of times where I was talking to Christian boys and I would see like a Bible verse in their bio and I'm like, oh, yes, God, this is the man for me. <laughs> and then they're like at a concert that I'm like, why mm-hmm. are you at that yeah. concert? You know what I mean? Or they're saying things and thinking different things or like um, even like on dates. And I'm just like, I'm thinking they're going to be a certain way and then they're not. And then it was just like, uh, you're just not where you are, like in your walk yeah, with God, yeah. which is fine. But then that's, you can't just try and force people's way into it. You got to be like equally yoked in yes, all aspects. It doesn't exactly. necessarily yes. mean Christian, not Christian. It's like, it's yo, just where like you spiritually? Levels. Yeah. 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 So I think um, the way that works is just that we're both on the same like level mm-hmm. of spirituality and sometimes one person is more than the other which is good Mm -hmm. because then you're just like helping pull each other up and like holding each other accountable for things um yeah it's really it's hard (laughs) as well but like it's fun and it's nice to have somebody that like understands Mm -hmm. you Mm -hmm. and someone that like is also always just thinking about god like in everything that they Mm do yeah I think that's dope. And I, I mentioned it and bring it up because um, in the last episode that I listened, mm. um, that was like, I got high last weekend. Yeah. You had just mentioned like the, him being just like so, I don't know, like encouraging. Mm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. in, in those moments and it didn't feel as if like it was super like condemning yeah. or anything like that. And he was like, remind, those thoughts would come yes. to your mind and he they would remind you of like who you really were yeah. and like what you should yeah. be like directing yourself towards. And I think it's just, always dope to highlight examples of that of just like real like godly relationships yeah. that are yes. working you yeah. know what i mean but how did, how did you all meet though um we he was he did a show with montel because it was an art gallery slash oh, okay. live show that's cool and i <gasps> wait were you there I, have you gone see montel before i have i've okay. seen him a couple of times um but the first time i saw him live was i was just it was he had posted that he's having a show mm-hmm. And I was like, I I have to go see this person because I've been listening for so long. And I was like, yeah. So I went to go see him, but it was an art show slash live performance. Mm. So when I went, it was Lucas's art that we were seeing before Montel performs. (laughs) So yeah, I walk in and it was like, you know, the art and stuff. And I was walking, I was like, oh, this art is kind of sick. And then like, I mean, I was really just there to see Montel perform. So I really didn't Uh care. But like, after the show, I think we um like had a brief conversation and then found him on Instagram and then like was listening to his episode and I was like, oh, he's Christian. Is, like uh, yeah. he's mm-hmm. he's painting like King David and mm-hmm. all these things. Yeah. And it was cool to see that because I didn't see that. Um and then we just like connected. I think <laughs> we had we planned to make a podcast collab. <laughs> And we were like, oh, like, you have a podcast, I have a podcast, like, let's, like, hop on a yeah. Zoom call and do, like, an episode. Yeah. And then we just didn't record the episode at all and just talked for, like, three hours straight about, like, everything. Mm-hmm. And I was like, huh. And I just, I have some crazy stories, but I'll keep that for later. But, like, <laughs> it was just, like, also praying for, like, God. Mm-hmm. Because I was in a moment where I was like, I cannot do anything that is outside God's will for me. Right. Like, I actually cannot make that mistake at all. Mm-hmm. So it has to be in line. And maybe it's too early to say anything. So maybe I'll regret <laughs> this later. I hope I don't. But like just asking for confirmation and seeing how they lived and how right. how they think. Checking and, the fruit. Yes, yeah. exactly. Oh, and not just what they look like, but like, you know, what's coming out of your mouth? Like, mm-hmm. What are you doing in your free time? Yeah. And it just really aligned with everything that I was doing as yeah. well. So it was... Then biggest takeaway okay. of this year in this relationship, maybe that you didn't know, that you did know, in terms of like, I don't know, the uh, what makes it work, mm. the, you know what I mean? Even like the hard times, how to get through those, like what is like yeah. a big thing that you've kind of like really gleaned from like the whole thing. A lot of people think sometimes it's like all good. You know, you see the Instagram clips yes. and all that, right? It looks cute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think even like, Sometimes because you see such perfection mm-hmm. that even one argument is like, oh, are we not good for oh, each other? Yeah. Because I don't think it should be like this. 
But I think the biggest takeaway is you have to, I don't know if it's a takeaway, but maybe advice more so is that like, it is okay to have understanding, misunderstandings mm. and like arguments right. and conflict, but how do they handle those? Like, how how are the difficult conversations had? Because it's like, if I was angry and you're angry and we're just like yelling at each other right. and you don't, no one is accepting accountability, then maybe that's not the right way to go about it mm. or like the right person. But sometimes there's so many things that both of us like just get so angry about. But then it's like how the other person reacts to how you're angry. Like just accepting fault, like seeing where you're coming from, being like, okay, I understand. And then like doing things differently the next time, like being like, okay, I see where you're coming from. Um, how can I make this better? Instead of doing whatever we can to make the other person even angrier. Of course, yeah. Um, yeah, seeing how, because conflict is okay, but am I storming off and like slamming the door whenever I'm angry? Yeah, or am I like sitting nice. down and listening <laughs> yeah. to you mm-hmm. and what you're angry about? Yeah. So, yeah, that. And um, I guess I think um, that nobody's perfect and you you don't run away from the first sign of like weakness in somebody, you know? Mm. Like you can't just hold someone to a standard and yeah. then when they don't meet that expectation, it's like, oh, you're not good for me because you can't even meet expectations yourself. Yeah. So yeah. just understanding that we're all flawed and there's different things that is not going to be completely perfect to someone, mm. but you have to look at the bigger picture. Someone told me like, 80 20 like you have to be willing to like what's the 20 percent that's bad and the 80 percent that's good and is that 20 percent that's bad can you live with that mm-hmm. because sometimes you be like oh they're so perfect but they don't go to church and it's like that's a 20 percent that you can't live yeah. with you know what i mean yeah. like that's something that or like they don't believe in god or they're like you know they know there's something out there they just know what it is it's like Yo. that's not a that's not something you can that's not a 20 percent you can be yeah. okay with so Choosing like what what twenty percent are you okay with? And is it like their height? Yeah, that's a twenty percent you're okay with. Like you can be okay with that. <laughs> you know? No, that's yeah. dope. I was just having that conversation about like non negotiables versus preferences. Yes. And um I was like, does someone really check every single box? No. And it's like no, but I love how you explain it. And I'm going to use that now. It's like that 80 20. It's like for yes. me, like 20 would be like they listen to RB music. Yeah. Or something like that. You, know you don't what like I mean? RB music? Huh? You don't like RB music? Oh, wait. I, was think, I guess I was thinking about it the opposite way. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes. So okay. it's like that wouldn't be a thing that wouldn't make me like, yeah, you know, I want to be yeah, with them type yeah, beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Or like just small small stuff like that. Yeah, but right. I think that's dope. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. 80, 20. I needed to hear that. <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going through a little situation right now. 80-20, I like really? that. Really? Good, 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 good. Does that put it into perspective? It does. Okay, it does. Good. Most definitely. So what, Can what you live it? with that 20? I think so. Okay. I, need, I need to think on it after the EP. I need to think on it, but I think so as of right now. Okay, that's I like good. That. Oh, then when, okay, so then when it comes to, because um, me, our whole friend group has like conversations. You're good. Okay. <laughs> um, dang, what's okay? We have this conversation like here and there, but what is it? How do you manage and what are those conversations around like being like in an interracial relationship, mm. right? Because I think that's also like super, super, mm. super important. Yeah. And if you want to talk on that, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I yeah. can. Um, I will talk on anything. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that black boys have it harder. Because if you're a black boy with a white girl, you have it harder than a black girl with a white you boy. You think like, so? I think it's um, people react to that harsher mm. than the other way around. I got you. Um, there's a lot of things that, like, I had to kind of swallow my pride and mm. understand that, like, they're obviously they don't know this thing. So sometimes something happens, and I'm like, how can you even think like this? And right. it's like. Obviously, they can think like that because they haven't lived the experience yeah. that you have. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of pros and cons. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I would really like dark skinned babies. That's a con. I'll just live with that. Fair enough. Hey. <laughs> but like, I'm like, because I used to, I honestly, I think that this is karma because I used to make fun of light skins all the That's time. Crazy. <laughs> and I'm like, I, kids I'm, be I'm about to have Jaden so and like Xavier. <laughs> but um, <sighs> um, yeah, like, I don't know. I think it, 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 it is challenging. Mm. Like, and it's just more than. Even black and white, it's like African as well. Like having that. That's what people that, don't always realize too. Yes. It's about like ethnic background and culture. 100%. It's bigger than just mm -hmm. like face value. Yes, yeah, exactly. Because he came over for Thanksgiving, and I was like, "You can't peer, put your like, you can't put your feet up. Like you have to sit like this, right. and like you don't, you can't change the TV to what you want to watch. Like the the elders have to mm, like yeah. watch that. Just like things that like because growing up in Ghana, like you're just taught like." Remain small. Don't make a sound in front of elderly people. Mm. And then a white boy walks in. And it's like, hey guys, what's up? Oh and, I'm like, and I'm like, I was like in shock. And I was like, you can't. You you're not allowed to yeah. speak. <laughs> He's like, why? And like they loved it. They were talking to him. That's you know, dope. That's dope. To, like like engaging yeah. and stuff like that. But I, it was just a shock to me because that's not how I was raised. Mm. And then I meet his family, and they're like completely different. And I'm just like, sometimes I'm like, I, it's kind of like this uncomfortableness mm, of yeah. just like being in spaces where everything is different around yeah. you. But um, I think our relationship can transcend race, which is a good 100%. thing when like it doesn't even become a factor because we both know it's bigger than ourselves and like it's bigger than race and what it looks like. But it's definitely like, challenging and sometimes i feel like am i doing the right thing like you know what yeah. i mean like but like you can't you don't choose you know what mm, i mean it's not yeah. like something that i was actively looking for right. and i know some people actively look for people that are like yeah. a different race and right. stuff that which is very weird to me but it's just not yeah but sometimes i'm like dang is this what i represent <laughs> <laughs> But I, I don't. I don't think it should be a, a sign of that. Like I think yeah. sometimes that's what we talk about. Like yo, if you get an in a relationship, relationship of any kind, like whoever yeah. it is, it's kind of like a sign of like yo, like you're not black enough, or mm -hmm. you're not. Yes. You know yeah. what I mean? And I don't yeah. think yeah. that should be like that. Yeah. The indicator yeah. for someone's yeah. commitment to their culture right. or community. Yeah. I um, was getting my hair done. Sorry, I was getting my hair good. done, and the hairstylist, like I showed them. I think Lucas FaceTimed me. Yeah. And he was like, Oh, you're dating a white boy? And I was like, Yeah. He was she was like, I could never date a white boy. And I was like, why? And then she was like, you know, me and you are not the same. And I was like, What? what? Yeah. She was like, that. she was like, she was like, you know, like you could tell like me and you are not the same. And I I I and to an extent I understand what she was saying because she grew up in like Brooklyn and she yeah. was just like, she talks differently than me. Mm -hmm. Dresses differently than me, so I understand what she was saying, but it does make you question, like, what? Yeah, like, yeah. am I not black enough, mm. or like, am I whitewashed? Am I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, hundred percent. I don't, I don't, and it's it's just the way that it is. But I, I don't think that should be. Yeah, personally, I don't think that should I be agree. like the indicator at all. I like, at all. I think you can. There's a duality to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, you can have that commitment to like your partner yes. and also. The community yes. that you come from and they yeah. don't have to be mutually exclusive yeah. all the time um yeah. and yeah i think that's dope with your relationship that y'all are that conversation is open though mm. with that like you know what i mean those cultural differences and whatnot like you know even though he walked in and was talking or whatever mm -hmm. but <laughs> um that those conversations are open and that like you even feel comfortable like bringing those things up because i think sometimes yeah. people get in different relationships whether that be whether that be that cultural difference is a factor or like where you're at spiritually and they just don't say nothing. Like mm. it's just kinda like okay, yeah, we'll just get through this. The, yes. the 80 20. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And like it's nothing that you ever actually mm. speak to or talk to. Yeah, so. and, they, and they can't change or do things differently if you don't yeah. say anything. Uh, yeah. So yeah. Then it just builds resentment. And then mm. you're like, oh, this person isn't for me. But they might have been if you Fact. like said what was Fact. wrong or mm. going on. Yeah. So I think that's yeah. dope that you have that in your relationship. Most but um definitely. one thing that was on my mind that we were, that we talked about earlier, um, I think it was asked who your audience was. Oh yeah. And then you were kind of like thinking, talking about um, how success looks different between like the world mm. and us mm -hmm. in terms of that. But I wanted to ask, what is one or four? You know, cl in closing, one okay. of our last questions. 
is like what does success look, look like, like for you to you right now where you're at yeah I'm curious right now i think so success looks like when i can hear from god mm. um that's when to me i am being successful in 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 anything that i'm doing and i went through a period like really fairly recently where i felt like i just wasn't in line i couldn't hear anything i wasn't seeing signs like i just didn't feel close to him mm. or like his presence yeah. and that's when i feel like i'm like something's wrong gotcha. um i think that there's obviously a lot of things that i want to do uh, some of them i can't even really define what it is i just i'm like i want to be great but like at what you know <laughs> so like there's a lot of things i want to do and like an impact that i want to leave but i can't do any of that if he's not like in my ear telling me what to do mm, every step of the fact, way. Mm. So when I lose that voice, I'm, that's when I feel like lost. Yeah. And I feel like everything I'm doing is like crumbling down. And I don't have faith in anything that I'm doing. And I think like everything I'm doing is like failing and stuff like that. It's just when like I don't have him. I don't feel that I'm close to him mm -hmm. or near him. Um, so being successful is like I woke up and I... I had a clear direction and like even sometimes it's not even if it's not audible or as a parent just knowing that you're walking in line with God's will for you 100%. and that's like okay like I had a good day or like this is successful even mm -hmm. if it doesn't look like it yeah. on the outside world mm -hmm. it's like yeah sometimes like I'll record an episode and I'd be like yeah God really spoke to through me in that one and that's a successful podcast, yeah. as opposed to like I just said something and I'm like, what did like what did I even say? I didn't even feel right, anything. Yeah. So it's just the most cliche answer, but that's no, just no, like not, yeah. when I when I'm I feel like I'm doing a good job um, because if I really look at metrics and analytics, yeah. that's just going to stop me from everything that I'm doing. Mm -hmm, yeah. You know, so yeah, I love that. Super fire. Okay. So, in closing, we usually do this. I'm going to let you do it. Okay. <laughs> Anything you want to leave people off with? Piece of Ooh. wisdom, knowledge, advice. You've given so many gems so far. Mm. Or anything you said. said. So I've got so much from this. I'm not going to lie. I did too. Okay. Um, hmm, what do I want to leave? Um, I'm going to say that oh my gosh i'm so i'm drawing a blank right now um but i think that okay i'll leave with something that i recently feel like god said to me which was that i i was just like sitting there and i was just looking at like everything that i'm doing right now and how it feels very blurry and i can't even really mm -hmm. draw the line to like what's next or what is going to make me feel like I'm doing something good? Like, yeah. what is really the path that I'm on? And I just felt him saying, like, you have to be comfortable in this space right now. Like, you better get comfortable mm -hmm. because you are not going to, I'm not going to give you all these things that you're dreaming of next week. Right. Like, yeah. it's not, you're trying to rush your way out of it, out of the uncertainty when that's like the fun part is not knowing, mm. you know what mm. I mean? And not knowing how it's going to happen and it's just like trusting that it's going to happen. So just relax, like yeah. literally stop trying to navigate your way out of this, um, trying to make it happen quick, trying to rush out of it and just relax and just get comfortable in this season right now mm. and just take a breather because you, whatever you're trying to accomplish, you're not going to do it by working twice as hard or mm -hmm. thinking that you're doing something different like it's it's going to be given to you and there's nothing you can do physically that will bring that right mm -hmm. now yeah. and then you just have to sit back and wait for it to be handed to you slowly by slowly yeah. like slowly by slowly. yeah i think that's what i'm going to leave <laughs> with that no that's actually fire hold on i'm trying to find this post that i saw okay that. <laughs> it says something along those lines Yes, okay. it was so good. I don't know if I'm going to find it, though. You can take your time, bro. 
<laughs> no. Did you save it? Yes. <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to cut this. because. <laughs> Okay, hold on. If it's not in here, I'm like, sure. I, I peeped how the rings was matching the fit, though. <laughs> she, not, she really trying to go crazy. <laughs> crazy. Are crying. you big on accessories? Um, I really like rings. Okay. Um, I have a lot of rings. I used to wear like so many, and then mm. my mom would say like, "That's a mental illness. Take it off." <laughs> but yeah, I like I like accessories. Yeah, I've been trying to get into rings. I don't have yeah, any. Yeah, you should. I need to get into. I it. like your. What does that say? Struggle well. I need to, need to. Is that Risa? Yeah, I need him to go over it again because it's faded. But yeah, struggle will. No, but I found I found the post. Okay. So it yeah. says, "If you know God, you know that you can't hustle enough to match His favor." Mm. So I think that's I important like that. what you were saying because yeah. sometimes we can get so caught up in the uncertainty and with so much anxiety yes. about like what is next and like how much more we should be doing mm. when like we're exactly where God wants Most us you, to yeah. be. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I love yeah. that. So. Yeah. <sighs> thank you so much for coming on like this thank has literally you. been like this is like a dream you, you no, say this is I'm amazing no you said it at the beginning but this is a dream <laughs> having you here yeah. being in New York I know we like try to ha make it happen mm -hmm. I don't know when that was a few months ago oh, a little yeah, bit I'm glad it didn't work ago. out same I was because, like I wanted to be in person yeah, no, 100% yeah. so this was literally perfect yeah. so thank you again really appreciate thank you, you so make sure oh me. actually go go ahead and plug oh, all yeah. your socials oh. you know what I mean all that in podcast or whatever. okay my podcast is called Welcome to the Kingdom it's on Apple and Spotify and my Instagram is A T A K O R A K A R R E N. Yeah. At a core I can. Yeah. Y'all know all that will be in the description. Too. In the description, y'all yeah. heard it here yeah. first. So we appreciate y'all. Stay you. Stay real. And stay humble. We'll catch y'all next week. Much love. Oh my gosh, that went better than I thought. It was amazing. Great. I was so was nervous great. at first. I was, I was getting nervous. I was Especially so nervous. also because of this setup, it's so professional. It's nice. Like, it's it's 